To our next guest, can help us discern tonight known from unknown, looking at Israel's intelligence as the world watches Al Shifa very closely. Jamil Jaffer is the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute at George Mason University, also served in both the Bush White House and Congress in positions intimately related to national security and foreign policy. Jamil, I'm glad you're here because we have seen in things like, you know, the video and the rocket that if something happens and people die, it goes up like this. And it can become a regional problem. This is a hospital, so it's maybe even more sensitive. You understand the intel process. At this point, do we know for a fact that Al-Shifa is being used as a command center by Hamas? Well, Chance, all we can say definitively is that both U.S. and Israeli intelligence sources have indicated strongly that what is happening at Al-Shifa is the use of that hospital for uh, Hamas purposes, for, as a command center, as a place to potentially put hostages and the like. And beyond that, what we do know is that the Israeli forces have been on the ground. They've, they've put out information that, that they believe demonstrates uh, that it is, in fact, been used as a command center, that there were tunnels uh, and the like. And so, you know, we have to go on what we know and what, what information has been put in front of us, whether that information is accurate or not. Everybody will have to judge themselves. But what we know for a fact is that the U.S. White House, U.S. intelligence community and the Israeli leadership and their intelligence community has said that that's what's happening at Al-Shifa. Yeah, a lot of people are out there and they're a little skeptical of those claims. Um, so I was looking through the research and after the 2014 war, Amnesty International, which by the way is now calling for a ceasefire, wrote this. I want to read it, quote, as well as carrying out unlawful killings, others abducted by Hamas were subjected to torture, including severe beatings with truncheons, gun butts, hoses and wire or held in stress positions some were interrogated and tortured or otherwise ill-treated in a disused outpatient clinic within the grounds of Gaza City's main Al-Shifa hospital, end quote. So, I'm, Jamil, my reading is this dual use has been well known and established for a long time. Why is it coming into question now? Well, Chance, you know, this is part of the challenge here is that in this conflict, what we've seen is the Israeli forces are held accountable for every perceived violation of the laws of war while Hamas is held not accountable for any violations of the law of war, including encouraging their own civilians to stay in place, knowing that an Israeli ground incursion is coming. And they're, they're the ones using, you know, humans, Gazan civilians, as human shields. They're the ones putting weapons in, in schools, in facilities, putting these underground tunnels underneath these buildings. So it really, in a lot of ways, while Israel is taking the brunt of the responsibility uh, in the public media and in the public sphere for these for these issues, the real guilty party in all of this is Hamas. So how would you go about collecting evidence? Because again, I think the international community is looking for hard evidence. How would you go about collecting evidence when for weeks you've been signaling, you've been telling people, get out of there, we're coming in, you know, is there anything left? Well, that's exactly the problem, right? They know they're coming and Israel gave them two weeks to clear out all that material, all that stuff, and to say, look, we were never here. Now it does appear that Israel, that, that Israel believes it's identified, uh, you know, this evidence, it's evidence, it's identified tunnels and the like, but you still have skepticism. Is that really true? Is this, you know, fake news, right? And this is the challenge of the world that we live in today, where everyone is able to question anything, factual or not, by simply just calling it fake news. That's enough to undermine the credibility of any information you have. And then, of course, you know, going back in our own history here in this country, we had a president of the United States staying firm on a world stage. I believe Vladimir Putin over my own intelligence community. That undermines any credibility our own intelligence community has amongst our own public, much less the world public. It does seem like the IDF and Israeli leadership, they are quite acutely aware. People want information. They want to see it with their own two eyes. And they put out some video. I mean, there have been some tunnels, um, some weapons is my understanding. I think there had been a hostage nearby the hospital. But are you surprised so far there is no smoking gun? I think a lot of people expected that they were going to go into the basement, open a door, and it goes into another layer. And they can say, you see, here's what it is right here. We told you. You know, this is one of the challenges, Chance, of intelligence collection. It's all a game where you're taking a lot of disparate pieces, you're bringing them together and trying to figure out what's going on. There's never a clear, this is the smoking gun, this is what happened. And a lot of times, intelligence is partially right and partially wrong. And you've got to act on the best information. Remember, Jan, the laws of war don't require you to not take action when you're not 100% positive. The laws of war don't require you to protect civilians at all costs. It's about a proportionality calculus, about the military advantage to be gained. Now, 
every mm-hmm. effort needs to be taken to protect civilians. And the truth is, the Israeli government and the IDF is painfully aware that they will pay an extremely high cost for every civilian killed. They're not. They're, they're not. They don't not know that, right? And so they're making every mm-hmm. effort, I think, to avoid civilian casualties. But this is war. It's a war that Hamas brought upon itself after killing 1,200, 1,400 people, 1,200, 1,400 people, the equivalent of a dozen 9-11s in a single handful of hours. With all that in mind that you just said, you know, all these competing interests of safety, optics, politics, international law, you know, that you might feel Hamas is there and, and believe that they are based on the evidence. And you also see all these preemie babies, you know, rolling around in these yeah. areas that, you know, they don't have incubators and things like that. What does an occupation of Al Shifa look like? Because I, I would assume that, you know, Israel doesn't just pack up, go home and say, you know, okay, it's yours. Yeah, look, I don't think Israel has any interest in occupying Gaza. They've already left Gaza once. I don't think they're planning on sticking around uh, for any longer than they absolutely have to. But at some point, they are going to have to take control of some of the areas of parts of Gaza, at least to create that separation border that they intend to create, that this sort of demilitarized zone. And in doing so, they're going to, have to take responsibility for the civilians that are in that area, um, and they're going to have to provide for them, um, as Hamas clearly is not doing today. Now, we can blame Israel for, for, for the limited supplies and the like in the area, but the truth is, at that, at that southern border, right, on that border, the Egyptians control one side, and Hamas controls the other side. Israel does not control that Egypt, that Egypt border crossing. So if supplies are to come through there, that is a decision made by Hamas and Egypt. And mm-hmm. supplies need to come through. And that's an important part of this conflict as well. At this point, millions, maybe billions of eyes are on this hospital. And as all these accusations are flying around and some evidence being presented, we really wanted to talk to you tonight, Jamil. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chance.